Hi everyone and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions, my podcast about knitting, spinning, and sewing. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 50 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. A big welcome to any new viewers and welcome back to any returning viewers. I appreciate you spending a little bit of your time with me. Today is a really nice sunny but cold Friday in February here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. We do have a Ravelry group for this podcast that you should totally go check out and join if you want to. It is where you'll find all the giveaway and knit along stuff. There are also a couple other fun things in that thread, finished objects, or in that group, <laughs> finished objects thread, and an ask me anything thread, all kinds of stuff. So go check that out if you have not yet. And running right now in the Ravelry group is our patterned sock knit along. And thank you, thank you so much to everybody who is participating. It is so much fun to look through those threads. Um, so the patterned sock knit along is running right now through the end of February. And it's where you can knit any pair of socks that are not plain vanilla socks. Anything goes as long as it's not plain vanilla. And you guys are knitting some amazing socks as you have been since the beginning. I am continuously impressed by what you guys are doing. There are beautiful things in there. I, again, this week, have not touched mine because <laughs> I am the worst. Um, I am knitting the Sherman socks, which is, uh, you sold the teak pattern for the pattern sock knit along, which I affectionately consider the mother of all pattern socks because it is, um, Kind of crazy, kind of not too crazy. It's a little crazy. And uh, I am just the worst at knitting pattern socks, which is why I decided to host knit along, I guess. But I'm gonna get back to it. I got till the end of February. That is why I made this knit along so long. It's because I knew I was gonna take forever to finish my socks. So <laughs> take advantage of that. Start some now, you have plenty of time. And uh, hopefully I finish mine by the deadline. And um, yeah, it's been great. So thank you for participating. There's also a hashtag on Instagram, which is patterned sock cow. So check that out. Share what you're working on. I'd love to see. And thanks again for participating. So, okay, moving right along. Two, well, okay, so I'm wearing the same thing I was wearing last week. <laughs> which is my even flow cardigan, which was also my finished object from last week. It is a pattern that I knit really recently by Hohi Locatelli, and I think I may have been wearing it the most out of any other sweater I've ever knit, because it's the best. It is my favorite thing I've ever made in my whole entire life. It's the even flow cardigan. If you want a better look at it, check out last week's, check out last episode, and um, I talk pretty in depth about it. I love it. I, I wear it constantly. I've been considering making another one because I love it so much. It's like my perfect fit for a sweater. It's my perfect shape for a sweater, for a cardigan. I'm just in love with it. I really, I like, I want more, like I want five more of these in all different colors. So I don't know. There are a lot of sweaters on my to knit list but I kinda, I'm pretty tempted to knit another one of these, even in the same yarn, like different color, but like this sweater in this yarn, which is socks that rock medium weight, is just perfect. It just all came out perfect. I love it. So I've been wearing it nonstop. I can't stop wearing it. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I'm wearing today. It's the Even Flow Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli my favorite ever. And I don't have any FOs to share this week, but I do have some works in progress. So what are we going to show you first? How about some socks? I have been knitting on a pair of vanilla socks and this is a pair of hand spun socks that I've been working on. It is living in my sugar tots project bag. And I have one done and here it is. So this is a knee-high sock that I have knit in some of my hand spun yarn, which was spun out of some 
Moon Rover Fiber, which was Superwash Merino and Nylon 8515, and this was the club colorway from 2015. And this is the little sachet that came with the fiber. This is filled with lavender, which is lovely. And I'm having a lot of fun with these so far. So here's the cake. This is what I have left. And I love it so much. It's pretty much a sport weight yarn. So I have accounted for that in my needle size and my stitch count. Um, but here is the whole first one. And there is my heel. So pretty much what I have done is I cast on uh, 56 stitches for the cuff. I did a two by two ribbing and I am knitting these on a size one and a half needle, which is my kind of standard sport weight needle size. And so this is all 56 stitches. I started decreasing around here to 48 stitches. And so the rest of the sock is just 48 stitches, which is really nice and quick. I did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset and my favorite toe. It's a rounded toe with a blunt end that I kitchenered. And it fits great. I love it. They're nice and thick. They're nice and squishy. They're perfect. And I had, I think the braid was about somewhere between 130 and 150 grams, I want to say. So I should have plenty of yarn to finish the second one. And here I am on the second one. Okay, so <laughs> here's the second one so far. I'm still in the 56 stitch realm and pretty soon, I think actually almost right now, I need to start decreasing to 48 stitches. And I'm knitting these, like I said, on size one and a half needles. These are my Chiagu interchangeable minis and as you can see, since they're hand spun, the kind of gauge of the yarn or thickness of the yarn changes throughout. So there's like a couple of bulges here and here and like a spot where it goes in here. This is where the yarn's kind of thinner. This is where the yarn's kind of thicker. And that's just how it's going to be with my hand spun sock yarn, with my hand spun yarn in general, is it is uneven. So I'm okay with that. It's fine. It stretches. It's going to fit good. And I'm having a lot of fun with these. I love the way it's striping. This is my first time doing kind of an intentional self-striping with hand spun. And the way that I did that was I separated the whole braid into long strips. And the, the way it was dyed was just kind of one color after another, the whole braid down. So I divided it into skinnier strips and I spun everything just one after another, all in one long gradient. And then I chain plied it. And I'm not the best chain plier. It's not my favorite way to ply, just cause it's kind of hard. I think it's harder than traditional three plying and it breaks a lot, not a lot, but it broke some. And, uh, nah. but it's how I was gonna get the effect I wanted. So I did it and it came out great. I mean, I had, like I said, some breaks, but I'm not really worried about it. I had some little pigtail curly cues in it. I'm not really worried about it. But um, that's how I did it, and it came out to be this self-striping. And it's it's not really even. Like down here, the stripes are thick and kind of gradiated. And then, well, that is where my heel was, so whatever. And then, like here, you've got this weird thing. And I like that. I really like the inconsistency of it. I think it makes for really cool, really interesting socks, and I love them. I love them. So, let me show you again. Here's my cake. I'm in the gray right now. I've got some lime green next and then some orange. I love it. I love it so much. I'm so happy with it. Um, I have knit hand spun socks in the past, and really love them. This is my first time knitting hand spun knee hand socks and if you guys know me you know at this point I'm in love with knee high socks. I'm like obsessed. So. Those have been fun and exciting to work on. I am into them. I'm into them. 
Okay, next up is living in my Neon Cats project bag. It's my Summertide shawl. I, it has been so long before this that I've worked on a shawl like this. It's so weird to be back into this kind of knitting because I haven't done it in so long. But this is the Summertide shawl. It's a pattern by Helen Stewart. And I am this far. So let's show you the yarn that I'm using and then I'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, the main color, this first color that I'm using right now is Woolen Vine Yarns in the Paranormal colorway. And this is on her Nouveau base, which is a Superwash Merino single ply. And I love it. It is so cool. I believe it was her like October Halloween colorway last year. And it's, it's black and white and gray and hot green. And then the color that I'm going to be using for the bottom color block section is this. This is by Yarn Experiments and it's called Night Dame. And this is her 100% Superwash Merino single ply base. And it is gorgeous. It's really a dark purplish gray with shots of magenta running through it. Oh, I just, I think it's really beautiful. I think these two colors look really good together. And I really like that it's gonna be, that these two colors are gonna be together in like a color block style rather than like stripes or anything like that. I think it's gonna look really, really good. So here is where I'm at. I've done the whole, I've done the whole garter section down here. And then right now I'm onto the lace. And I believe the whole rest of the shawl is lace. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Um, I, if you notice, have um, this much yarn left on it, even though I have the whole rest of the cake to go. And that's because I got to a point in the pattern where I was following the chart and I thought I was at the point where I was switching colors, so I broke the yarn. When it turned out I had two more charts left to go in the lace in the main color. So, wah wah. <laughs> I have um, I have a break in my yarn now that I'm gonna have to deal with, but it's okay. I kind of put it down after that because I was just like, man, and I was kind of over it. But um, I'll get back to it. I just I'll just reattach the yarn and keep going, and I'll have an end to weave in. Boohoo for me, right? So this lace is really simple, and I do have stitch markers between every single lace repeat because that is how I like to do lace is with stitch markers. It makes it so much easier for me to track where I'm at in the pattern and to track whether or not I have made any mistakes, uh, which happens so far. I've caught myself missing like, I don't know, like two yarn overs at some point. And honestly, I mean, I'm, you should know how to read your knitting. It's a great skill. And I do know how to read my knitting. But when you're just knitting along and not quite paying attention, it's really nice to have those reminders of a stitch marker. Like this is where you should be at the end of your little eight stitch repeat or whatever. And if you're not there, you know exactly what you need to do. You go back and make sure all your little repeats have eight stitches in them. And if they don't, it means I missed a yarn over or something like that. And it's really easy to figure out. So. I love doing that. It takes all my stitch markers when I have a project like this. So I have all kinds of different stitch markers on here because I use every single last one of them. Um, I need to get more. My favorite kinds of stitch markers are these, which are just plain copper or brass or whatever they are, little jump rings. And uh, I bought these at my local bead shop for like five cents each or something like that. Yeah, I just like grabbed a handful of them and it was like a dollar. And uh, I need to just go buy more because these are really, really handy. So I am knitting this shawl on a size six, four millimeter signature needle. And I love it. Like I said a few minutes ago, it's funny because I'm so not used to knitting this type of thing anymore because it's been so long since I've knit a shawl like this. Like superwash merino, single ply, fingering weight, on a size six needle, which is so standard for me for shawl Venus. <laughs> but um, I'm just not used to it anymore because I haven't done it in so long, but I'm loving it so much. 
So this has been coming along really great, slow and steady, but I am into it. I have my little moon progress keeper that I really, really love, and it matches this project perfectly. Um, I love the moon, in case you didn't know, and recently was a really amazing moon where it was, what was it? A red moon, a blue moon, a lunar eclipse. Was that it? Is that, is, was that all the things that it was a few nights ago? It was like a crazy combination of things that were all happening at once with the moon and it was amazing. Um, where I live in California, like what was supposed to be like the peak of it was at like four in the morning and I did not set an alarm to wake up in the middle of the night to see it, but I did happen to wake up at like five, um, just randomly. So I went out in my front yard and kind of looked at the moon and it was pretty epic. It was pretty beautiful. It was huge. Oh yeah. And it was a super moon. That was the other thing I think. It was huge and it was red and you could still see kind of vestiges of the eclipse. So like part of it was kind of in shadow. It was really cool. Uh, did you see it? If you saw it, tell me. I want to hear about it. Did you set an alarm to see it? Did you stay up all night to see it? I wish I could do that. I can't do that anymore. Ten years ago, I would have done that. <laughs> um, so that was pretty amazing. I loved that. Uh, anyway, so that was my summer tide shawl. Again, Helen Stewart. I love her patterns too. They're... She's one of my other top designers that I love. Hohi Locatelli. Who I've already talked about. You sold a tea who I've talked about. Helen Stewart. They just there are so many amazing designers out there right now, aren't there? Isn't Ravelry great? I feel like Ravelry has really improved the whole style, I think, of knitting patterns and freedom of designers, right? I don't know that's I like so I've been kind of cleaning out my office a little bit here around me and I had a whole little collection of old knitting magazines like interweave and like knitting the magazine and like I don't know it, just a bunch of old magazines and I looked through them and I kind of wanted to get rid of them and so I went on Ravelry and I looked at all the patterns that are in each of those magazines and I literally this is so bad. I don't want to be mean. I'm not trying to be mean. <laughs> but I literally didn't find one pattern that I wanted to knit. And I kind of found that about myself slowly is that the kind of patterns that are published like old school style in like knitting magazines and in some like book publication, modern book publications, I feel like have come a long way in her a lot. More my style than they used to be, but like kind of the whole publishing world of knitting patterns never really appealed to me that much. And since Ravelry and since like modern type magazines and publications have come around, I just feel like there's so many, I don't want to say better patterns because that sounds mean, but <laughs> more stylish patterns, patterns that appeal to me more. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what got me started on that, but I love Ravelry. Maybe that's it. <laughs> I think it's done, obviously it's done a huge amount of, in my opinion, good and a huge change to the knitting community. And it's just so cool. And like all the pattern designers that I love most are all independently published Ravelry designers. And I mean, I'm sure a lot of them are in magazines and books too, but I don't know. Anyway, let's move on to my next work in progress. Uh, which is living in my Fat Squirrel Speaks project bag. This is probably my favorite project bag. I love it. So in here, we have got a blanket on the needles. This is a new cast on. This is the Spiral Blanket of Awesome. And here's what I have so far. Now the Spiral Blanket of Awesome is such a fun pattern. I've knit one once before and I absolutely loved it. It's just all stockinette with some yarn over increases and it just creates a big giant spiral. I love it. Now the yarn that I'm using is Miss Babs 
Okay. I don't know how to pronounce this. Kawia? Here's the tag. It's a DK white yarn. It's 100% superwash, superwash merino. And it's really beautiful. This is in the deep sea jellyfish colorway, which is a colorway from Miss Babs that I feel like when I bought this maybe five years ago was like kind of all the rage and I really wanted it. And I bought three skeins of it. So here are the other two. Now, as you might be able to tell, all of the color ways, all three of these colorways, same colorway, they're all pretty dramatically different. And um, that's okay, it's a blanket, it's not a huge deal. This is really deep stash. Like I said, I bought this probably, my guess is almost five years ago. And so this was my favorite one. So I started with it. This is my second favorite one, so I'm gonna do it next. This is my least favorite one, it has the most amount of orange in it. And so this is the one I'm gonna use last. And this is just gonna be a giant circular blanket. And on the border of this blanket, there's like a, it's kind of like a ruffle border, but it's more like a pleated border, I wanna say. So I think that's where most of the orange-ish yarn will go. But I am knitting this on size six needles. And these are my Knit Picks interchangeables. And I've got my Coochie Kobe Progress Keeper on here, which is a Bob's Burger thing. <laughs> And um, yeah, it's been really, really fun to work on. I love this pattern so much. And this is a free pattern and you can find it on Ravelry. It's the Spiral Blanket of Awesome. And I actually think that this pattern is not necessarily available on Ravelry. You can find it on Ravelry. There's a project page, but I don't think that project page actually links to the pattern because it's a PDF pattern that is available like online, like on a blog, I think. And if I remember correctly, I Googled the pattern to get this to make it. And then I looked up on Ravelry and I couldn't find like a link to the pattern. So I'm obviously gonna link the pattern in the show notes, but I think it works best if you're actually looking for the pattern to Google it rather than try to find it through Ravelry because I'm pretty sure the link isn't there anymore. I don't know. I will link to the pattern itself in the show notes in case you're interested. And so this is gonna be a really big blanket and I am making this as a baby blanket. And I have made one of these, like I said, as a baby blanket in the past for a couple of friends of mine who had a baby a few years ago. And that I made in worsted weight and this is a really nice like adjustable pattern to where you can use any weight of yarn you want. And that was so much fun. And I loved it so much that I decided to make it again. And yes, this time it is going to be for my own baby because I am pregnant. Um, I am 15 weeks pregnant right now. So this is my very first baby knit for myself. Um, so yeah, I am in my second trimester of pregnancy. And yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> I haven't announced it anywhere yet, so this is the first time. And uh, I've really only very recently told everybody in my personal life. And uh, it has been awesome being pregnant. I love it. This is our first uh, child, and it is so much fun. I have been so wanting to knit all the baby things. And I am gonna talk about that later because I have like a bunch of stuff that I plan on knitting. And um, yeah, so I am pregnant. It is super fun, I love it. Um, we have been on a kind of crazy up and down pregnancy journey. Um, you know, it's we've it's been a while since we decided I wanted to get pregnant. And uh, you know, it hasn't been without its ups and downs and losses. And uh, so the first trimester was, while it was really fun and I had a really good time with it, I seriously think this whole pregnancy thing is like crazy fun. Um, it did have its like anxiety with it and like not really sure if this one was gonna like stick and be good and you know, so at this point, I finally am like, I feel confident enough in this pregnancy to where 
I can start knitting for it, which is what I've been really looking forward to. Um, I've been holding off knitting because I just wasn't confident enough yet in the pregnancy, but now I am and I feel really good about it and I have been waiting to cast on this specific blanket the whole entire time. So this is really exciting to me and this is, like I said, really deep stash. Um, I didn't buy it specifically for a baby blanket, I just bought it because I liked it. And when I did decide that I wanted to have a kid, I decided that that's the yarn I wanted to use for the baby blanket that I was going to make first. So this yarn has been waiting for this project for a little while now. And I am really, really stoked to have it going. Um, I don't know yet whether it's going to be a boy or a girl. I am going to find out. Um, but I am definitely not one of those people who have color preferences for boys or girls. So I don't really care. <laughs> but um, I just love the colors of this anyway. It's got some of my favorite colors like this like magenta -y purple. It's got some colors that I don't care about that much like orange. Orange is like might be one of my least favorite colors but um, but I still love it. It's such a cool colorway and I think it's going to be a really good baby blanket. So that is uh, my new cast on and I have been having so much fun with it. I love it. Um, I started out on a six needle on really small needles and I just went up to I think like a 32 inch and next up I'll do a 40 inch. Um, I did make one alteration to the pattern. In the pattern itself she gives really specific instructions on how to cast on in the round, this little center part here. And I did that when I made my first spiral blanket of awesome and it was fine. But since then I've discovered Emily Oker's circular cast on, I think is what it's called. And I was introduced to that by Kristen of the Yarngasm podcast through her Oracle shawl. It's how she um, has you start her Oracle shawl. And I liked it a lot better, so I use that. It's kind of hard to see, it's kind of dark yarn, but that's the cast on I used for this. And I will link to the video I used in the show notes. And I love it. So everything else just has been kind of to the pattern. And I love it. So that is that. That's been awesome. And I haven't started any other baby knits yet, but like I said, I will talk about it later. I have a lot in mind. So, yay. Okay, on to my next work in progress. I have got living in my other fat squirrel project bag my stroker which is a Ysolde Teague pattern that I am knitting and this is a pullover pattern it's got color work in it and it's made in gorgeous yarn and I love it so okay let's show you what I have got a pretty good portion of the body done so far and I am knitting this in some Harrisville Designs Highland Wool, and this is their worsted weight yarn. It's a woolen spun yarn, and it's gorgeous, and I love it. So here's my cast on. This is the ribbing at the bottom, and I've done all of my waist decreases, and I've knit straight for a little while, and I am just now at the point where I'll start increasing back out again, and I've got my Sugar Tots Narwhal Progress Keeper on here, and this yarn has just been a dream to work with. I really love it. And I am knitting this on a size seven, my high, high, sharp interchangeable set. And it's been all stockinette, all straight up, but I'm having so much fun with it. I really dig it. Um, once I'm done with the increases, I'll do the sleeves and then I can attach them and start the color work, which I'm really excited about. So the yarn that I'll be using for the color work well, first of all, here is the yarn that I've got for the body. And something about this yarn that I did read about, this is my first time using it, and I did read about this in others' reviews of this yarn, is that there are a lot of knots in it. And as you can see, I am about to come up on a knot in a few inches. <laughs> so this is my second skein that I've opened. I knit through one whole skein so far. And in the first skein, I did find two knots. Um, and in the second skein, 
this is the first one so far. So that's, you know, I don't know. It's not awesome as a knitter to come across knots and have to like deal with it, but it really doesn't bother me too much. I know it's a thing that happens in mills. It just is going to happen. Um, and I don't know, maybe with a smaller mill and this kind of rustic yarn, it happens more often. I'm not really sure. I don't really know if this is more than, well, it's more than normal for me, but I don't know if this is more than normal for this kind of yarn. Um, but while it is a little bit annoying, it doesn't bother me that much. Um, the way that I deal with knots and with joining new yarn for this type of yarn is by spit splicing. And that's where you take one end of yarn, take the other end, undo the plies a little bit, stick them together, kind of redo the plies back on themselves. And then um, with saliva, which is what I use, you don't have to use the saliva, you can use the water. Um, you take it and you just felt it together. And that works really, really well. So it doesn't bother me too much that there are a lot of knots in this yarn, but just to throw it out there, it's how it is with this yarn so far. Um, but this is my main color. This is the charcoal colorway. And these are the two colors for my color work. This is plum and this is silver mist. And I think they're going to be really super cool together. And I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get to the color work portion. And something that's really nice about this pattern is that it's a sweater and it's in worsted weight, which is really nice because this was my last sweater and it was sport weight and this sweater is pretty enormous. Um, this is going by really fast. It feels like it's going by really fast. And I will show you my swatch. This is what the color work should look like. And I'm just so into it. I cannot wait to get to it. I can't wait till this thing is done. Um, now, this is a pullover and it's a fitted pullover. And you may say, Tommy, you are pregnant. Why are you making a fitted pullover? Um, and yeah, I did start this pullover after I knew I was pregnant. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it fits. I'm not too worried about it. Um, I do think it's going to be a little loose. Like this seems just by looking at it a little on the big side for me. And I'm making the smallest size. Um, but I still think there's going to be a little bit of positive ease. And so after it's done, I'm going to see if it fits. I'm going to see if I can wear it. And if so, I will wear it until it doesn't fit anymore. And then um, once I have the baby, I will start wearing it again, I guess. Um, I'm really not too worried about it. I probably should be making cardigans <laughs> from here on out uh, for the rest of my pregnancy, which I do plan on making a cardigan as my next sweater. But um, I don't know. I thought that was pretty funny. I, I didn't even like, it didn't even really occur to me that I was making something that might not fit pretty soon, but I don't really care. It, it'll fit me again someday if it doesn't fit me now, and I think it will fit me for a little while. I mean, positive ease, and I don't know. I've never done this pregnancy before. This <laughs> I've never done this pregnancy thing before, so I don't know how big I'm gonna get, but we'll see how it goes. And I, if it doesn't fit, I will have a gorgeous, warm, squishy sweater waiting for me when I can fit in it again. <laughs> So, um, yeah, this has been crazy fun. I have not been doing any like modifications or anything. I've knitted, oh wait, that's not true. <laughs> I'm making it longer. So in the pattern, it's written to be a pretty, I don't know, normal length pullover. So it comes down to, on Ysolda, on the model for the picture, the sweater comes down to like the top of her pants, you know, kind of that like normal length for a sweater. What is that like? High hip or something like that. I don't like sweaters that short. To me, that is short. I need either a longer sweater, like tunic length, almost tunic length, or if I'm going to go short, it needs to be cropped. I don't like it to hit right above my pants. I need it to be longer than my pants. So, um, like, just past the fullest point of my hips, I think is my ideal for sweaters. So I did add an inch 
to the ribbing section to add a little bit of length. And then my gauge was a little, my row gauge was a little bit bigger than the pattern called for. So for the extra inch or so that I want to add, I think that'll account for it. So I, hopefully it'll be my preferred length. Um, but yeah, I definitely did add a little bit of length to this. So yeah, that is my stroker. That's a pattern that I've kind of always wanted to knit. It's been in my queue for a pretty long time. And I, I'm pretty happy that I'm working on it right now. I really like it. And I love this yarn. Okay, so that's everything I've been knitting. I have been doing a little bit of spinning. I'm really happy to say that I'm spinning a little more regularly lately. I took a pretty long spinning hiatus for a while and I'm back to it and it feels really good. And the last yarn that I spun was for my socks. So that was a pretty thin yarn. And now I'm doing a bulky. So this is what I have so far far and I really dig it. It is neon, isn't it? I love it. So it's, I'm not the most technical spinner. I'm not a technical spinner at all. I spin and see what happens. I'm going for a bulky white yarn and who knows exactly what I'll get. Um, but I'm kind of, I'm going to do a two ply. I'm doing my singles kind of eyeballing it to like what I think is going to come out to be bulky. So <laughs> we'll see. I think it's going to be pretty good though. Um, it's pretty thick, which is really fun to spin, like really fun. So that's kind of what the single ply looks like right now. And this is some spun right round. It is Rambouillet in the Lulu colorway and spun right round is an amazing small business. I love her stuff so much. Um, so it's the Lulu colorway and it's all neon and I love it. So I split the braid up into a bunch of little bumps like this and I'm just kind of spinning them randomly together. I'm not going for any kind of color management. Um, and this is what I have left of that. I had four ounces of the Lulu colorway. Now I plan to have one ply in the Lulu and my second ply in this Julie Spins Falkland combed top in the princess colorway, which I have six and a half ounces of. Now I need about 12 ounces for the project that I have in mind for finished yarn. So this is what I'm gonna apply it with. And so pretty much it's gonna be this applied with this. This is a little more neon, this is a little more muted and I think they're gonna look really good together. Um, now I have six ounces of this and four ounces of this. That is not gonna be enough. So I decided to supplement this ply with some other fiber and I can't remember, I think this might also be spun right round but I can't remember and I can't remember the colorway because I took off two ounces of it and then gave the other two ounces away to a friend to use so I don't remember but I think, I think it's Rambouillet and I think it's spun right round. And I think it's a Valentine's Day colorway, but I can't remember. <laughs> but um, this is what I'm gonna supplement it with. And in the bags of the braids, they looked pretty like kind of similar, like I could get away with supplementing. Like here they look okay. In real life though, this looks really different than this. So, <laughs> um, that's a little, I don't know, I wish I just had more of this because this is so bright and so punchy. And this is kind of, this is muted. The pinks, like this is hot pink. This pink is like more of a raspberry kind of pink. And so I don't think it's going to look the best. I think it's really going to be pretty different, but it's okay. I'm just going to put it all at the end. And a lot of times when I knit a pattern, I use less yarn than is called for in the pattern. So I will come to this last and if, and then when I get to it, I'll just hopefully just use a little bit of it and it'll just be like a block of different color at the end. And I think that'll be fine. So this is all I have left of this to spin on the first bobbin. 
And then I'm gonna start spinning this stuff and on a separate bobbin, I'm gonna spin this supplemental stuff so that I can just kind of throw it in at the end for filler. So the pattern that I have in mind for this hand spun yarn is the I forget what it's called, but I'm going to put it here. It's another um, Curious Handmade Helen Stewart pattern, and it's the Sonder shawl. And that's a bulky weight um, shawl that she put out in her Shawl Society collection last year or the year before, I can't remember. Um, but I have that pattern, and it has been waiting for me to spin this specific yarn for it. So I'm excited to be getting going on that. It's going to be really bright and really crazy, and I can't wait. These are very much my colors. I am a lover of neon. Haven't always been, but I am now. <laughs> so that's been really, really fun. Spinning thick is so satisfying and I really am enjoying it. So that's my spinning. I can't wait until it's into some yarn because I know that knitting a bulky shawl is gonna be just as fun as spinning I am going to be having a shop update for Moonstone Dye Works, which is my hand dyed yarn company, tomorrow, which is Saturday, February 3rd. <laughs> Saturday, February 3rd at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time on Etsy or uh, through MoonstoneDyeWorks.com. And I'm gonna show you what I will be having in the update right now. Okay, so I have a few things to show you here. Uh, the first colorway that I will have in the shop tomorrow is a brand new colorway that I dyed, and it does not have a name yet. So, <laughs> it is uh, a mint green, kind of a fluorescent -y mint green with lots of pink, and brownish speckles. And I really, really like this one. So I don't know what she is called yet. If you have any ideas, let me know. I love this one. So my new green colorway. I don't know what she's called yet. She'll have a name soon though. Um, I will also have some waxing. And this is one of my tonals. It's kind of a warm gray on the purplish end of things. And I really, really like this one too. So we will be having this on, we'll have all my colorways on Merino Single, Stellina Sock, BFL Sock, and Natural Merino this time. And I will also be having some galaxies. This is another one of my newer colorways, pinks and purples and blues. And this one is on Merino Single. And then I still have a little bit available from my last update, some high and low which is a very highly speckled teal and purple and lime green. So check that out if you want to. I hope you can make it. If you feel like it, it is going to be tomorrow, Saturday, February 3rd at 10 o'clock. I hope to see you there. Um, so yeah, that's it for shop update. I am going to move on to favorites, and yeah, in my favorites, I am going to talk about baby knits. So I have been obsessed with the idea of knitting baby things for a pretty good while now. Like I said, ever since I started wanting to get pregnant, I knew <laughs> one of the most exciting things about it was going to be knitting for a baby. And I have been holding off this whole time because like I said, I, I wanted to make sure that everything was okay with my current pregnancy to knit for that particular baby. 
So I am finally feeling confident enough in this pregnancy to just knit all the baby things. So that's what I'm going to do. And I have created a bundle on Ravelry of all of the uh, baby knits that I want to make. And this is just consisted of me remembering things in the past that I've seen that I loved and um, just kind of scouring Ravelry for all the baby knits and like picking and choosing the ones that I really like. And so it's kind of like my baby cue. That sounds really bad. <laughs> anyway, because I didn't want to just add them to my regular cue because I wanted it to be a separate list. So I made a bundle in my favorites. Uh, if you're interested in it, you can check it out. But I'm going to go over some of my favorite ones right now. And um, if you have any favorite baby knits, let me know because I am totally just am sponging it right now. I want to know all the good baby knits. So, wrote them all down in my show notes. The first one that I definitely want to knit, and this is a crazy popular one, and I've wanted to knit it. This is like the main one I want to knit. It's the Flax Light by Tin Can Knits. And this is just a really simple pullover knit in fingering weight yarn. So, I'm really excited about that one. I haven't picked the yarn yet, but I want to grit, I want to get some really awesome hand-dyed colorway and knit a flax light. I think that would be really, really fun. Um, I'm also, I want to do the flax too, which is the same thing, but in worsted weight, and that sounds like a lot of fun too. And honestly, <laughs> I have, um, I've mentioned this on the podcast before, much of my stash consists of really old yarn that I bought when I first um, started stashing yarn a long time ago. And a lot of it's like old webs purchases, old knit picks purchases, yarn that I don't necessarily want to use anymore to make myself things. So I'm gonna use all that to knit for the baby. I mean, yeah, what a, what a good way <laughs> to get rid of these like smaller quantities of yarn that I don't care about anymore, right? I'm really excited about that. So I'm gonna be using a lot of old stash yarn. So that's cool. Um, so, but the flax light is gonna be some awesome hand dyed yarn that I love. Um, I do have a lot of worsted weight scraps that I don't know what to do with or things that have been caked up that I don't know what to do with. So a lot of that's gonna to go to this stuff too, which is gonna be awesome. Um, the next pattern that I really wanna make is the thumbless baby mitts. Thumbless Baby Mittens, and this is a pattern by Casey Mora of Casey's Creative Musings, who uh, has an awesome and wonderful podcast that I love. And she designed this pattern, and they're just little baby-sized mittens without thumbs, and they're color work, and they're just, they're really simple, basic color work. And I love them, and I've wanted to knit them ever since I first saw them. So those are definitely going to happen. I'm really excited about that. And another one I really want to knit is a sweater. It's the Wee Envelope by Ysolde Teague. And I've heard really good things about this pattern, like practically for babies, because the neckline allows you to get it over their head easier rather than like, it's not a crew neck, which apparently can be hard to get over a baby's head. I don't have much experience with babies, honestly. <laughs> I've, I've never really been a baby person. Like it's never... Babies have never been something I've been like really drawn to. I'm like more of an animal person. Anyway, that's irrelevant. <laughs> Point is, I don't have much experience with babies or um, toddlers or anything like that. So this is just based off of what I've heard. And I've heard that the Wee Envelopes neckline is really great practically for babies. And I love you, Solda Teague, and I love the look of this thing. It's really neat looking, so I want to make that. Um, I want to knit some bibs. Um, I don't necessarily know how practical that is. I hope it's practical, because that's what I want to do it for. Um, but I, one of my goals, and like I said, I have to preface all of like my opinions about myself having a baby with the fact that I've never done this before and I don't have any experience with babies. So this could all be me like daydreaming really unrealistically. I don't know. But my intention is to be really minimalistic with this whole thing. Um, 
I live a pretty minimalistic lifestyle anyway. I'm not really into clutter and stuff. I my office is a different story. My knitting life is a different story. I like a lot of stuff. I like a lot of crap. I love it. But <laughs> for most of my life, um, practically speaking, I'm a pretty, I'm not a hardcore minimalist, but I'm pretty, I'm on that end of minimalism. I love it. I like simplicity. I like not having a lot of stuff. I like not having a lot of single use items just everywhere. Anyway, I'm hoping to be really minimalistic with this. I don't want a lot of extra crap everywhere that I don't really need. So I'm hoping to make some of our own things for this baby, like bibs. You know, I don't really think I want like a million bibs from Target. I'd rather make a bunch of them. Um, so I'm hoping to knit some and to sew some. Uh, and I think I'm gonna be getting back into cotton yarn, I knit a big giant washcloth for a coworker when she had her baby a few years ago. And it was just a simple mitered square striped cotton washcloth. And it was, it was big. It was probably like 12 inches by 12 inches. And I gave that to her and she told me later on that it was like the best cloth she had for her baby. I don't know exactly what she used it for, but she said out of all the like washcloths or cloths she had from like commercial stores and stuff like that, that was the one that worked the best. And so I was like, okay, cool. And I always remember that. So I want to make some more of those, just like cotton washcloths, cotton bibs, stuff like that. Um, I think that stuff will come in handy. I don't know exactly what for, but I think it will. <laughs> so I want to get um, back into cotton, back into boring square washcloths. Uh, and... I also, the last thing that I know I really want to do is I want to crochet a blanket. So I'm knitting a blanket right now, and uh, I also really want to do a granny stripe crochet blanket for this kid. And I want to do it at a worsted weight yarn. Pretty much, I want to replicate the style of the blankets our grandmothers, our grandmothers and mothers made for us when we were kids. And they were just plain striped granny stripe crochet blankets out of acrylic yarn. And I am not into acrylic. I'm, I don't like it and I won't use it. Um, but I want to make one of those blankets with good yarn. So I'm really excited about that. I don't know what I'll use yet. Maybe just a bunch of my worsted scraps and it'll be really scrappy and really stripy and will not match. And, uh, I don't know, I might buy yarn for it, but probably not. I'll probably just use what I have on hand. And it won't all be the same weight, probably. I'll probably use a lot of hand spun. Um, it seems reasonable to do it all in superwash, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I have. We'll see what I find. I might not do it in superwash. I might do it in a much mixture of things. So I'm really excited about that. I am still working on my granny stripe crochet blanket in fingering weight scraps, and I adore that thing. I love it so much. Um, but I definitely want to make a small little kid or baby version with worsted weight yarn. I think that's going to be really fun. Uh, we still, I don't have any um, blankets, like handmade blankets. I'm pretty sure my mom made me one when I was a little kid or a baby or something like that, but I don't have it. My husband though has the one that his mom made him and the one that his grandma made him. And uh, we still have them and we still use them. Uh, I wish they were wool, but that's why I'm going to make my own, so that I have wool ones. <laughs> and um, I have a bunch of other patterns that I intend to knit. There are some really cool little kid and baby patterns out there on Ravelry. And I, like I said, I started a bundle. Uh, if you're interested in checking out, please feel free to do so. And like I said, if you want to suggest some patterns to me that you think I should knit or that you've knit and you loved or that you like the look of or you've seen other people knit and love, uh, let me know. I'm, I'm super interested to hear what you have to say about it, uh, what you think is practical to actually make, you know, for a baby, for your own baby, um, including sewing. I'm, I know I haven't sewn anything in a long time, but I do hope to get back into sewing a little bit so that I can make things for this kid. Um, I think that could be really useful as well. So I want to hear what you think. Let me know. Um, that is where I'm going to leave you today. 
and I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not yet to be kept up to date on future videos. And thank you, thank you so much for joining me again today. I am so excited to be recording and I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Again, I want to mention really quick that I am going to Stitches. I think I have one more episode to record before I go to Stitches, but I'll be at Stitches West in Santa Clara at the end of February. Um, we are planning our trip, my husband and I, down there. Um, so I think I'm going to be there on the Sunday, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, I think we're also going to take a trip to the Monterey Bay Aquarium while we go down there. But um, yeah. Okay, so join the Ravelry group. Join the patterned sock knit along and oh, okay. I'm like not good at ending this podcast. There is one more thing. I was considering doing a knit along for baby and little kid knits because I have a feeling I don't want it to completely take over my knitting life for a little while, but it's going to feature it's definitely going to feature. <laughs> I'm going to be knitting that stuff. I'm At least I plan to. I hope to. So if you guys are interested in also knitting baby or little kid things and want to do a knit along, I thought that might be a good idea. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. I might start a knit along for that. Um, okay, now I'm going to go. Goodbye, you guys. I hope you have an awesome couple of weeks, an awesome weekend. I hope you're doing fun and amazing and wonderful and relaxing things. Have fun and stay awesome. Bye.